Let's start today by talking about penguins. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, if given the choice between penguins and literally anything else, you pick penguins, obviously. Anyways, there's an old comic strip by Gary Larson, the creator of The Far Side. It's just a single frame, but the lower half is full of penguins, and they all look exactly the same. Black backs, white chests, pointy beaks, flippers straight down, no facial expressions. Over and over and over. And then in the middle of the group, you see this tiny penguin, flippers stretching upwards, head tilted back, and he's singing. I gotta be me, oh, I just gotta be me. Today on the show, why and how you should be you. Why you should zig when others zag. I'm Jay Kunzo. stick around. Today's episode is brought to you by Right Side Shirts. Right Side sells t-shirts and watches and onesies and more all sporting artwork designed by kids who submit their art to get approved to be turned into merchandise. And all of RightSide's profits go to help local art programs stay up and running. Here's the deal. Everywhere you look, schools are creating a sea of sameness among kids. You sit in rows, you take standardized tests. In fact, our schools were invented during and for the factory age where people went to work in areas where they needed to be the same. But today, when creativity is the most important trait that you can acquire, and where jobs require you to be different, not the same, we still see art programs getting cut too frequently. So help fund art programs in need and support more creativity in kids, and snag some sweet swag while you're at it. Say that five times fast, snag some sweet swag. Go to rightsideshirts.org. In the early 1960s, there was one band that confused just as many people as it impressed, playing a style that fused together rock, bluegrass, reggae, country, folk, jazz, the list goes on. They seemed so different when compared to the rest. As their most famous member once said, you do not merely want to be considered just the best of the best, you want to be considered the only ones who do what you do. Even if you've never heard of the band or heard their music, you've definitely heard the name of their fans. Deadheads. The band, of course, The Grateful Dead, and it was the late great Jerry Garcia who said that famous quote. Few quotes apply so directly to our work as creators today. In a noisy world like ours, you don't just want to be the best of the best, you want to be the only. If you just stop trying to be a better version of everyone else, you might find way more success using your creativity to be the only one who does what you do. And to actually strive for that, it's unthinkable. Welcome to Unthinkable, stories of people who make the leap between what the data says to do and what their intuition is saying they should do instead. Once again, I'm Jay Kunzo. So what happens if you choose not to compare yourself to others? What if you just ignored them entirely and did what felt right? To answer that, let's go somewhere where it's summertime all the time. Hey, what's going on? My name is Austin Afridi. I produce music as Viceroy and I'm a DJ and I live in San Francisco, California. Austin doesn't quite fit the stereotype that you have in your head of a house DJ. He's usually wearing a Hawaiian shirt and pink or powder blue shorts of the slightly too short variety. And his venue of choice isn't some posh club in front of an aggressive dance floor. It's a pool party outside in front of a sunset. Austin is, as his tagline suggests, Summertime, all the time. And he stands out. Austin didn't start by trying to concoct some fictional brand based on what would sell. Instead, he constantly tried to figure out what got him excited and then pursued that. You know, it was bouncing off days off my friends and logos and branding. And I was like, I like the beach kind of summer stuff. It's kind of who I am. That's, again, it's organic in that sense because it's not like this contrived marketing scheme to like 
you know, like, oh, it's like make this whole like facade of this summer dude who wants to like, you know, get everybody to think it's, you know, five o'clock somewhere all the time. You know, it's uh, it's just kind of who I've always been and like just kind of a happy kid. So growing up. So but it wasn't like, oh, I sat down, you know, and was like, can, this is all contrived. And like, what, you know, like this is what I'm going to do because this, this, this and this. It was just more of a organic growth. He knows what he's all about. And in his words, he's about jams, not bangers. He's about summertime all the time. He's about just being himself constantly. And he sees that as empowering for his brand and his career, not limiting. The way to like have a long-term career is like find your brand, find your niche, find your like specific thing that makes you stand out and then spread that on a, like a mass scale, you know, expand it, um, which you can do. And what I've been focusing on with my new EP coming out um, is like finding out what else stands for summertime all the time. And there's a lot more than people really realize. Um, so that are other genres, you know, that maybe haven't been explored in electronic music as much. There's just things like that, that can take my niche specific branding. That when someone sees my logo, when someone sees my music and knows my signature sounds and someone sees the imagery, they know it's me. But then there's also like the other things I can do with that, that might still surprise my audience that they're like, you know what, that does really fit in the brand. Austin isn't trying to be something for everyone, but Austin is trying to be something, something people can know and relate to, something people can identify with and love, but most importantly, something that just feels like him. This kind of makes you wonder if you just continually focused on being honestly and authentically you in your work, what good things might happen? Well, since we started with penguins, I thought it made sense to answer these questions by talking next about yet another adorable creature. Puppies. Except the puppy we're talking about next is uh, not exactly what you're picturing. This is the story of Eddie the Terrible. He just was kind of a jerk. And he was a jerk someone could love. That's Finn Dowling. She works for the Humane Society in Silicon Valley, California. And she and her team had the, I guess I could say, pleasure of taking care of Eddie. He was a lot of show and no go when it came to aggression, meaning he had barked and he had snapped, but he had never actually in two years bitten anybody. In December of 2014, Eddie became internet famous thanks to a rather atypical blog post written by Finn to try and get him adopted. But before we talk about that truly crazy article, you first need to understand something about animal shelter blogs. They're awful. Because shelter blogs are written by shelter people with the idea that most people that would only read them are shelter people. And not only that, but animal sheltering has traditionally been so strapped in such a reactive field that there's never been a moment to take a breath and be like, hey, is this actually working? And, you know, is this actually achieving the goal that it wants it, you know, that we want it to achieve? And so in scenarios like that, it becomes easier to look at what others are doing and simply copy them. You, uh... You might say that uh, that all those dogs turn those shelter volunteers into a bunch of copy cats. Anyone? No. OK, uh, so Eddie. So he came to us. I think he came in as a stray and he was pretty nutters right from the get go. Um, you know, he was barky. He was threatening to take people's fingers off. Um, that sort of thing, and it, which which a lot of shelters are like, why would you even try to save this dog? And and the reason is there's a lot of really terrible small dogs in the world, and this dog was under an enormous amount of stress. And you know this is not something that we don't see a lot, which is small dogs being absolutely terrified and acting like serial murderers. After two years, no one had adopted him, and so the entire staff decided it was high time to meet and figure out what the heck to do about Eddie. And that's when everything changed. I forget where it came from that 
we just decided we would market him as the absolute worst dog in the world. Three reasons you don't want to adopt Eddie the Terrible. Like to go for walks in dog infested areas? Enjoy the dog park? Keep walking. He's never actually attacked another dog, but he's made it abundantly clear that he hasn't ruled out the possibility. He goes zero to Cujo in 0.5 seconds. Want your kids to grow up with a full complement of fingers and toes? Not the dog for you. Some dogs love kids. We have a bunch of child-loving dogs here. Eddie the Terrible, however, is not one of them. Looking for a simple dog that will sleep in his crate? Not your guy. A bed in your room? Awesome. In bed with you? Better. In a crate? Let him sing you the song of his people. In retrospect, it's all in slow motion. So Finn wrote that piece, full of tongue-in-cheek reasons not to adopt Eddie, And mixed in with her writing were several hilarious graphics. One says The Walking Ed. Another says Nightmare on Ames Avenue, which is where the shelter is located. And my favorite shows a bright green background with wisps of smoke and the title Adopting Bad. And then it was like someone shook up a big bottle of crazy and just let it loose. We were at our marketing team, like Christmas dinner, which was super late because we had all been really busy and we got a call on our cell phone that good morning america is sending a producer over in like 15 minutes and it was just it, it was just the way that it went like everything just went crazy very quickly from abc news to usa today the daily mail to cbs everyone wanted to cover the story of eddie the terrible and finn credits all of this to the team's decision to be different than what every other shelter seems to do. Like, that's not where you start, particularly with marketing or anything creative, is you don't try to replicate it. You try to smash it on the ground, pick it apart, maybe see if there's something that works in it, and then rebuild something completely different. Eddie spent two years getting overlooked by potential adopters. But once the article went up, this terrible little dog found a family in just two days. He was adopted by a wonderful couple who doesn't have any dogs and don't have any kids. The husband is retired um, and the wife works sometimes and they just think he is the best thing ever. They think everything he does is adorable and wonderful and when he... um, when, when the husband takes him out for a walk, he barks at other dogs and that's fine, you know, and, and he has a perfectly wonderful, normal life and he's a jerk in public, but not a dangerous jerk. And I think his dad was actually going to get him registered as a therapy dog, um, because he has some disabilities and having Eddie around has been so wonderful for him that he wants to take him more places. But it was funny because I did come in the other day and they're like, oh, Eddie's here if you want to see him. And I'm like, how is he doing? They're like, he's Eddie. (laughs) What's crazy about this story is that all of that good stuff the press coverage, the various awards that the article went on to win, and of course, the result it delivered by finding Eddie a great family. All of that happened for one simple reason. They were honest. Sure, it was great writing, but the reason Finn was able to write anything great at all is that it was real. It was authentic to the dog Eddie is. Eddie is terrible in many ways, and so they were honest about it. So maybe in some weird, kind of sad way, if we're just willing to be more honest than everybody else, more authentic than others in a certain industry or on a certain medium, that's how we stand out. Suddenly, just by being honest, I'm the only one doing what I'm doing, and I stand out. 
This kind of makes you wonder if you just continually focused on being honestly and authentically you in your work, what good things might happen. A funny thing happens when you try to be something that resembles success. You usually don't find it. You wind up standing in a row like all the other penguins, same old, same old, no different than the rest, lost in the crowd. But what if the goal wasn't to be successful? What if the goal was to be memorable? Maybe then you'd stand out from the other penguins. Maybe then, like Finn Dowling, you'd just be honest with the world. Maybe then, like Austin Afridi, you'd just be honest with yourself over and over and over, pursuing that feeling at every turn, pouring yourself into every project, because that is how to do memorable work. So if you want to zig when others zag, if you want your work to stand out when others blend in, stop looking for blueprints. Stop trying to engineer success. Stop withholding your personality and your beliefs and your opinion from your work. And starting today, right now, as you hear these words, throw back your head, stretch out your flippers, and just be you. Whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong, whether I find a place in this world or never belong, I gotta be me, I gotta be me, what else can I be but what I am? Coming up, I'll share a really simple way to get started using more of your honest self in your work. One organization that helps us all show more true personality is Right Side Shirts. Rightside offers all kinds of quirky and awesome t-shirts and watches and phone cases and more, and they've all been designed by students. For every purchase, Rightside donates the funds to local art education programs and school art classes. So help more students have the chance to explore their own creative personalities. Check out the online store at rightsideshirts.org. Now, calling all super fans of Unthinkable please consider leaving us a rating and review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. This helps more people like you discover us, which in turn leads to more resources for us to make better and better episodes. And while we're on the subject of superfans, I wanted to give a shout out to a few comments coming from listeners. This one comes from Aaron Wilson, who says that he struggles to find the time to create between a day job and his family and has turned to the show to help. Aaron, thank you, my good man. And by the way, we all get that feeling. Another listener, Kara Hogan, says that she feels like she can go out there and do anything after an episode. Heck yes, Kara. Except if, if your anything involves you getting in trouble, um, just remember, you didn't get that idea from me. Speaking of me, Unthinkable is me, Jay Akunzo. And it's also a bunch of way smarter people than me, which I'll now list. Andrew Davis, Josh Cole, Caroline Nuttall, Ryan Brescia, Andrew Swinney, and Elizabeth Davis. Weekly motivation and support from Zandra Akunzo, studio support from Chris Higgins, and our music is by the dreaded Tylerosaurus Litwin. In a couple of weeks, I've got some bonus material from this episode that I'll share with email subscribers only. It's a short clip of Austin, aka Viceroy, talking about his stance on following trends. If you're not on the email list, be sure to sign up. The link is in the show notes, or you can visit unthinkable.fm and look for that big yellow button to subscribe. Okay, so here's our challenge this week in order to better follow your intuition and put more of you into your work. The very next thing you create this week, use a personal anecdote somewhere in it. That's it. That's the challenge. This could be literally anything, not just writing of some kind. Maybe you're putting together a deck to pitch an idea, or you have a meeting to network with somebody, or you're bottling your next homebrewed cider. Whatever you're creating in the next seven days, 
find a place for a personal anecdote that supports what you're trying to say to the world and involve it for others to see, hear, or find. Once you do that, I promise you it'll start to snowball. You'll start to weave more personal experiences into your work then personal opinions and beliefs, and before long, all this other more subtle stuff that makes your work wholly you and makes it memorable. So let me know what happens when you do that. Email me at jay at unthinkable.fm. That's j at unthinkable.fm. I'd love to share some of your replies from this episode along with that bonus content to a future email newsletter on a Monday morning. And just think, to create awesome work, that stands way, way, way out, it could all start this week simply by including one little story in one little area of a project that you create. Now that is unthinkable. <laughs>